Hello, my friends. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. If you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. This video is about Luminar Neo. And in particular, I'm talking about the five tools that you can use on every single photo. They work all the time. They're powerful. They're flexible. They're versatile. They're all those words, but they work every time and they're great tools. And if you learn these five tools, your images will get better because they give you a lot of power and control over your photo. Let's just cut to the chase, my friends, get into it. I have a photo here and I'm gonna walk through these five tools. Now, none of these will be a deep dive on these tools because that would make the video fairly long, but I've got multiple videos in this playlist about Luminar Neo that you can check out. The first tool, if you hadn't guessed already, is Develop Raw. Amazing power and control I talked about in that video, but for an image like this, I would probably come in and increase contrast, drop the highlights, maybe bump the shadows a little bit, just kind of playing with the tones, right? So I went from that to that, simple, straightforward kind of stuff. There's a ton of power in curves. I'm not gonna use it here. Again, not a deep dive on this tool, but this is the tool. Uh, if you're gonna pick one tool, it is uh, Develop Raw, as I've talked about in previous videos. Uh, I would go into color here and pull down the temperature. I just like blue a little bit better. Gray skies I love, but I tend to make them a little bit blue. Season to taste, you certainly don't have to do what I do. But you got great color control here with saturation and vibrance and temperature and tint. But you know, already I feel like I've got an improved image. It went from that to that, and I'm kind of just getting started. Now you can heighten or, or decrease if you wanted to, but in this case I might want to heighten contrast. You know, a little bit more smart contrast, a little bit um, less highlights, maybe pull back shadows a little bit. You could also go into blacks and whites, pull down the black point a little bit get a little bit more contrast. I think that looks nice. But this is tool number one, Develop Raw. It gives you lots of power and control to take an image from that to that in a matter of seconds, right? So that's tool number one. Now tool number two is right below it, and that's Accent AI here in the Enhance AI uh, category. So Accent AI is kind of a super slider. It's like the one slider that kind of does it all. You just gotta be careful, right? It's super powerful, super versatile, and I use it all the time because it gives me a nice little extra kick that maybe I didn't get out of Develop Raw. I think it's a great complement to what you do in Develop Raw because um, as you can see, as I drag it more, be careful about that, but as I drag it more, I get a little bit more pop in the image. I'm a guy that likes to have my images to kind of pop a little bit. Um, I don't really go for muted. Um, I go for uh, a little bit, you know, maybe not edgy, but anyway, I like the images to pop. I can't think of a better word than pop. You know what I'm talking about, but Accent AI, super powerful, super versatile, works on every single photo because it does contrast, it pops colors because it pops contrast. It, it obviously impacts light because it pops contrast. So quickly and easily took the photo that I'd already used Develop Raw on and used Accent AI like that to get it to there. So that's tool number two. Now number three is right below that, Structure AI. Powerful, versatile, love this tool. It's absolutely fantastic. And I use it all the time on images and I use it in two different ways. I use it both positively and negatively to add crunch to some areas and remove it from others. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and add some crunch. I'm gonna paint it in and, and I'm gonna do this really quick and sloppy because this is not a masking video, uh, nor is this a, uh, a demonstration of how sloppy I can, well, actually it is a demonstration of how sloppy I can be. It's not a demonstration of you know, how to be more accurate um, with masking. Uh, by the way, masking tools are gonna get enhanced in Luminar, as you probably know, with Mask AI, and I know they're gonna be bringing back radial and graduated filter, things like that. Uh, those masks are gradient uh, masks, so things like that are coming, but this was allowing me to quickly add a little bit of crunch there, and then you can just commit it. The beautiful thing about Neo, of course, is you can go use that tool a second time, and in this case, I'd go negative, and I would go negative across the sky and water, which means, once again, I'm gonna go into masking. This time, I'm gonna go to, into a race and basically just use the same mask. Um, I just can't recycle it yet, by which I mean copy and paste. That'll be coming as well in the future. So I'll just go recreate a similar mask by just erasing it from the areas where I don't want this negative structure to apply, which is the same stuff I just applied positive structure to. Sloppy masking job, my apologies, I'm just in a hurry. I don't wanna bore you with me being tedious, but what I did here is basically uh, use structure twice, first time to add some crunch to the building, and then second time to remove uh, or smooth out the sky and water, basically. So super powerful, super versatile. That's why it works on every image. That's why that's tool number three. 
Okay, tool number four is right below that, and that's color. And of course, I love color. If you've been here before, you know that. And saturation of vibrance, which I kind of already did in develop. I may or may not do a little bit more here. I might come in, give it a little bit of extra kick in the vibrant section. But for me, the real power comes down here in HSL, hue, saturation, luminance. So what shade of color, how much of that color, and how bright is that color? HSL, hue, saturation, luminance. In this case, I might come in, uh, I'm not gonna change hue. I might come into saturation in the blue, maybe pull that down just a tad, because I did make the blue uh, in the sky kind of pop. The, the cyan is really popping that roof, so if you wanted to really accent that a little bit, maybe give it a little bit more. Uh, but also for me, luminance is a very powerful component of HSL. I use that probably more than it uses saturation because that uh, controls the brightness of these colors. So for cyan, if I wanted that roof to stand out a little bit more, you can see how that's impacting that. Maybe I go a little bit higher there. And for blue, if I wanted those to be brighter, I could, but I kind of want to go a little bit moodier perhaps. So I'm going to pull that down a little bit. And if you look at the before and after, before and after, by the way, there's a lot of orange in that building. So maybe I go back to saturation, add a little bit of orange. Uh, let me check the reds as well. Uh, you know, I can kind of adjust that. And don't forget, hue comes in really handy too. Maybe I want that orange to be a little richer and that red to be a little more intense. I'm just kind of playing here. I can just play around with colors and I'm just gonna leave that hue on the red alone. But you've got a lot of power and control. And then in the luminance, perhaps I wanna go and pop some of those oranges or drop them. Again, powerful, flexible, but you can have so much control over color. And that's why this tool works in every single image. But there it is before, and there it is after. Just some minor adjustments, just playing with the hue, the saturation, the luminance. Tons of control, tons of power. That's why that's tool number four. And tool number five is super contrast down here at the bottom. And I've done videos about that before. You can find a recent one there. And basically I just come in and I tend to adjust contrast in all three of these areas and then come back and experiment with the balance to see kind of what I like. I kind of like that a little bit. I'm gonna go play with this. I think that looks pretty nice and shadows. Ooh, that shadow, nice and kind of rich really. Um, so let me just show you before and after. Remember, whenever you pop contrast, because you're changing the intensity of the light, it's also gonna pop color. So sometimes I will do super contrast and then go back to HSL and make some further refinements. I'm not gonna do that here. That, uh, that cyan in the roof is getting a little intense. It might need to be uh, controlled a little bit better, but this is mostly a demo versus uh, an actual editing workflow. So I just kinda wanna walk through kinda what I do with these tools and how they can impact an image. I kind of like that mid-tones contrast going a little higher. Let me check that balance, yeah, balance a little bit lower. It's really making that building stand out a little bit. So one more time with shadows contrast. Let me adjust the balance. That's where you see the big impact. I think something about that, kind of like down the middle here. Let me get over here, yeah. Um, I think it about like that. Let me show you the before and after, super contrast. There it is, and that's with all those other adjustments still a little bit flatter. And then you come in with super contrast at the end and that really pops that overall. So that's why that's tool number five. And all together, you can have a huge, honestly, massive impact on your photo by using these five tools because these are five tools that work in every single image. Let me show you the before and after. There it is before, kind of flat to be honest. I mean, that's a raw file, unedited, just kind of blah overall. And now, I mean, that's, that's a color fest might need to go in and, and drop a little bit of saturation or vibrance. The point is you can see the massive difference that I made by using these five tools. That's why I consider them five tools that work on every single image because they give you tons of control over light, contrast, color, and a little bit of detail as well with that structure slider. So that's it for this one, my friends. Five tools, you learn these five tools, honestly, you could e edit just about every image just using these five tools. They give you that much power and control. Thanks for watching, hope it helps. Hope it gives you some ideas for your own editing. Drop me a comment down below. If you like this kind of stuff, give me a thumbs up. That tells YouTube that I'm doing okay over here and I hope that I am doing okay. So let me know. Thanks for watching my friends. You guys take care of yourselves. I will see you in the next video, which will be really soon. And until then, adios.